Okay, so Shirt Punch, um, if you didn't know, they're they're affiliated with um, with Nerdblock, and a, a few months ago they had this cool Nerdblock that had a couple of really cool Street Fighter items, and I thought I. Had if you're a longtime subscriber, you might remember Super Hammer Brothers in color. I used to do subscription box unboxings. I subscribed and paid for two companies, Loot Crate and Nerdblock. The reason behind this was that they both offered Mega Man items in July 2016, and being a big fan of Mega Man, I wanted to see which one was better. Also, I was interested on in how these subscription boxes worked. Loot Crate won that first round, but I continued to get both boxes since I was hooked on getting a surprise every month. Sometimes Loot Crate was really good, and other times Nerdblock was even better. But in the end, they were about 50-50. This would evolve into a year-long experiment to see which box was the best box in one year's time. Eventually, I found the videos to be boring and the interest to be lacking, so I moved on. But I continued to get the boxes and hope to maybe record these things and give my verdict at the end of the year. I do have two lost episodes, but at this point we weren't really bringing anything new to the table. You can go to any other YouTuber whose whole purpose was to do subscription box unboxings. I did make my one year mark with both boxes. Kind of. You see, I missed one loot crate which was lost by the US Post Office, so I went ahead and got the August loot crate and I ended my loot crate subscription with a bang. It was quite a good box, with my favorite item being a Lord of the Rings changeable glass. I ended up giving it to a coworker and good friend who liked Lord of the Rings much much more than I did. As for Nerdblock, well, this is where things get interesting. Nerdblock was a Canadian subscription box company co-founded by Ross Montague. They started in 2013 during the subscription box boom of the 2010s. Nerdblock was also part of ShirtPunch.com. This was one of those t-shirt websites that offered four t-shirts at $10 each for 24 hours. Since Shirt Punch and Nerdblock were under the same company, Nerdblock offered a $10 coupon for Shirt Punch that would be good for a month. That's two t-shirts per block if you pay the extra shipping. The coupon had another gimmick where the back of the coupon had a picture. If you complete the picture, you got $100 in Shirt Punch credit. Pretty sweet. I totally took advantage of the $10 coupon, and almost every month I was able to redeem it. I got some of my most favorite shirts from those coupons. Oh, and finally, the tag on the t-shirt was also a 10% off coupon going to yet another Shirt Punch shirt. That's a pretty sweet deal. Shirt Punch also offered items from previous nerd blocks, which I thought was pretty cool. This practice seems to be more the norm for box subscription companies nowadays. I took advantage a few times and got a couple of these items. Sometimes Shirt Punch offered a free item with the sale of a shirt. For example, all I would have to do is use my $10 coupon, pay the shipping, and I would get a free Super Mario Warp Pipe and Super Mushroom Salt and Pepper Shaker along with my t-shirt. They also had some weird sales like when they would have this whole mystery shirt sale. It might have been fun for some people, but a t-shirt is something I'm totally picky about. You would never catch old Raz Holly wearing a Doctor Who shirt. Maybe THE Who, but not Doctor Who.
Nerd Block had several blocks under them. There was the classic Nerd Block, Horror Block, Sci-Fi Block, Comic Block, Nerd Block Junior for boys, Nerd Block Junior for girls, and Arcade Block, which was my first Nerd Block. Some of the blocks would get a makeover. For example, the Arcade Block would be split into two categories. Gamer Block rated M and Gamer Block rated E. I chose the Gamer Block rated E, even though Nerd Block rated M would get items from Shinobi and Streets of Rage. I was very tempted, but luckily, they weren't worth it at all. There was a Revenge of Shinobi art card and a Streets of Rage strap keychain. One of the worst items in the rated M box. I only got to experience the classic nerd block, arcade block, and gamer block rated E for everyone. The classic block came in a white, gray, and light blue box with the nerd block logo. My favorite was the arcade block. This block was made to look like an NES. When you opened a flap, it would reveal a game printed inside. A boy and his block. Trouble in Blockalonia. A pretty cool homage to the NES. The last block that I experienced was the Nerd Block rated E. This block was all black, white, and green. Not as memorable as the arcade block. The Gamer Block featured Steam game codes that got you a free game on Steam. These codes came in a Super NES style box. I really liked that even though it did take up some room in the block. It looked like Nerd Block was doing great with some of the items they were offering, my favorite being the Legend of Zelda tote. When Arcade Block turned into Gamer Block, I felt that most of the items were better than Loot Crate. I always had a problem with nerd block shipping. It was like a sign when my first block was sent to the wrong address, thus making it late. Or should I say, even more late. My whole experience with their shipment was that I would never get a block on the month that I paid for. For example, I was paying for a block in October and wouldn't receive it till the second week of November. The Halloween theme shirt was pointless for a whole year. This would be the same problem with Shirt Punch's t-shirts. You could buy a Father's Day shirt on Father's Day, but then you'd get it a month and a half later. I mean, what's the point? Don't get me wrong, I like some of the items in the block and I never experienced being shorted an item. In October's horror block, there was supposed to be a Freddy Krueger flask and the subscribers eventually got one, but the harm was already done. There are two items that came from NerdBlock that I consider to be the worst ever. The first one is mostly just my own taste, but the Race Dance Ghostbusters Vinimates. This thing is ugly. I mean, look at his face, just look at it. This is not how I imagine Ray stands. He deserves better than this crap. Actually, let's just get rid of Vinny Mates altogether. Those things are the worst. The other item is the Tina Belcher Sodas figure. When it came to these two items, you can tell that Nerd Block just called around looking for the cheapest figure they could find. We got an email saying that the next Nerd Blocks would be delayed since they were having problems with their suppliers. Everyone eventually received their blocks. Around the same time, Shirt Punch was having their weird mystery shirt sale. The gamer block that I received in June would be awesome. One of my favorites, in fact. I can only speak for gamer block rated E, but while looking at other videos on the rest of the blocks,
received this shirt before, and it seems very out of place with the rest of the items in this box, so. Something weird happened to all the subscribers of the classic nerd block. Let's go back. The theme was badass women. And the box contained a DC Bombshells keychain, a mini Bombshells figure, a Women of DC Comics poster, a cheap Wonder Woman desk clock, and a Scrooge McDuck shirt. Wait, or was it a Ramona vs. the World shirt? Or was it a Nightmare Before Christmas Back to the Future crossover shirt? Or a Rocco's Modern Life t-shirt? Or a Decepticon's Popsicle shirt? That's right, Nerdblock began to short circuit, and it seemed like almost everyone got a different t-shirt, but not the one that was supposed to come with the block. Now this was supposed to be a Women of the Guardians of the Galaxy t-shirt. I have to admit, I laughed out loud by the third video when I saw the reactions of these upset people. Now I wasn't laughing at them. I was laughing at how crazy it was and in hindsight what this meant. Nerdblock was now liquidating their shirts and they made the excuse that the shirt that everyone received was correct. They wanted to capture the spirit of the mystery shirt sale from Shirt Punch in the Nerdblock, even though it was themed. If you feel like I lucked out, don't worry, remember that Mario Warp Pipe and Super Mushroom Salt and Pepper Shaker that I received for free for getting a Shirt Punch shirt? Yeah, now I have two. That's right, my last block was to be filled with overstocked items. My gamer block rated E came to me in my beloved arcade block box, which was a pleasant surprise but also confusing. Another item that I received was from my very first block. This was the Zelda Boss Key. What a way to end my nerd block experience. I got to open up the mysterious world of subscription boxes, and in the end, I got that same key to close the door on it for good. <laughs> I paid monthly because I didn't want to put down a hundred and some dollars for these subscriptions. July was supposed to be my last block and I should have received it at the beginning of August. I was also canceling my service at the end of the year so I looked up the site and I couldn't find a way to get to the site. Apparently, Nerdblock owed money to their suppliers. The one that I kept seeing is Udon's Mega Man Guide to the Robot Masters, which actually was a cool book, but I guess Udon never got paid. There's a whole Reddit page dedicated to this thing and it's very interesting. Some of the more notable companies Nerdblock owed and estimated amounts were McFarlane, $236, the artist Ramon Perez, $2,000, Shout Factory, $21,000, Udon Studios, $23,000, Entertainment Earth, $30,000, Marvel, $32,000, Super 7, $41,000, NECA, $60,000 Dark Horse Comics $70,000 Funko a whopping $230,000 and Diamond Comics Distributors $260,000 There were plenty of other companies that were owed money but these were some of the more well-known ones Nerdblock filed for bankruptcy in August 2nd, 2017. 
If you go to the NerdBlock website as of this video, you will be sent to xboxplus.net. But back in 17, they would say that it's now FanBlock and they were coming back soon. If you went to Shirt Punch back then, you would be greeted with a sign that said, currently updating their site and will return August 2nd, the day that they filed for bankruptcy. In March 1st, 2018, I got an email from FanBlock saying that they would be returning under new management and that the company was now in the United States. They had new plans for new items and so on and so on. Six days later, they sent a message saying how they would do their best to fix the problems of the old NerdBlock by giving credit for the missing boxes and offering other products. They wanted to transform the experience with NerdBlock to a positive one. This new and improved version of NerdBlock never showed itself. And people's credit towards the new NerdBlock was worthless. At the time of writing the script, I was really interested in listening to all the failed gaming consoles like the Ouya, the Coleco Chameleon, and now the Amico. This nerd block thing felt a lot like another one of those stories, and this time I got to experience part of it. I got my rush from getting these boxes, and it was cool. Eventually I felt like I was just wasting my money on a grab bag that I might not like. And besides, I could spend uh, $60 on a vintage action figure, on some retro action figures, or even classic video games or two. Hey, that's $60 at the swap meet. Or treating my buddies for pizza, or buying something nice for the future Mrs. Holly, or going to the movies, or...